There is a lot of speculation going on right now that there is a big cryptocurrency market crash incoming this week. This is because of the KYC, know your customer requirements that are being enforced against your USA, you know, the United States of America's customers. You know, they are being forced to leave a lot of crypto exchanges. And of course, 2023 has been a big year for the bulls. We've seen a large increase in price, a lot of people in their long positions from lower. And, you know, with the USA being forced out of a lot of exchanges, they are thus going to be closing their positions as they remove their crypto. And the, the speculation is that this is causing a large decrease in price. I'll be giving you my opinions on this speculation and, you know, my thoughts based off of the charts and the analysis, because as I will remind you all, at the end of the day, my trades, my biases, and my thought process is always based off of the chart. I'm really not bothered about the speculation and the news. I'll give you my opinion on this in this video, of course, but uh, my trades are based pure and solely on the charts and the technicals. Uh, so we see this local decrease in price. Uh, let's zoom into some price action and go over more, first of all, in a local perspective on this chart, right? So we zoom here into the 15 minute chart. Um, we can see we've recently been, well, for the t today, basically, been bouncing around this NPOC. And this is why you gotta, you know, mark out your levels and be aware of them, right? Okay, so this was what it looked like <laughs> literally 24 hours ago where we had the lower NPOC level aware, you know, to be aware of that lower NPC level. What happened at 2 a.m. today? We moved down and we touched that NPOC level. So this is what we mean. If you're aware, you're ready for those levels, you got to take that trade. Why? Because this basically formed a swing failure pattern. If we come down even on a lower term time frame, there is your slight front run of the level and there is the swing failure pattern onto the NPOC. That naturally gives a long trade position, okay? Because you've got your level marked out, you've seen the reaction, seen a swing failure pattern, that's a good long trade. Of course, like I was telling my to my team today, that if you took that swing failure pattern long trade, now is the time to be taking profits. Why was I telling my team that this is the time to be taking profits? Why? Simply because we're at the range high. Okay, at that range high, if I just draw this really simply for you, I'll remove that NPC because of course now it's gone. You had your range low and you have your range high. So just as we SFP the range low, you move on to swing fire pattern this range high. You move down to touch that NPOC once more, which is no longer of course now an NPOC, but a range low, bounce up into the range point of control, continuation to the downside. So now this mini range I'm gonna be removing for you and coming on to a bit of a higher term time frame on the one hour. So first few takeaway points to bring us up to current price action are it's a level to level environment. We got our levels. If we see a good reaction like we saw today off of a swing fire pattern of the low, you know, that's a good long trade. Bring it up to the range high, which is then a good short trade. OK, so, you know, you've got to be opening your shorts at these range highs. Why? Because it's an SFP of range high. Then, of course, now that long trade is closed would have been closed in profits. Why? Because you take profit one at range high, stop loss to entry, of course, now that long stop down, and the short is still running, okay? So there's a lot of money to be made in this current environment when you are able to adjust and trade the charts for what they are. So my next, uh, you know, bit of analysis is moving on to the current price action, okay? We've gone quite fairly swiftly through the um, range low now, and I can give you my insights of why we've just lost this range low. You know, I've been looking at the ES today, and the ES come up and took out 4,200, took out a previous high that we had here. Okay, so if we come back here, I'm gonna have to come quite a bit, but you can see here, real simple stuff. There was our last major high on the ES. If we just draw this out correctly. There's your last major high on the ES. EGS come up, took that high and got this pullback. And of course, with the ES pulling back, Bitcoin is pulling back too. So, you know, it's really not overly difficult when you are here with a plan and prepared. So moving on to what we're looking at next on Bitcoin, of course, we have a few major levels. First of all, let me talk about what I was going to talk about with the KYC discussion. And of course, the speculation that this is, you know, a major reason of causing the current downtrend in price. Um, of course, the one that we are most focused on <laughs> would be Bybit. They're introducing KYC. And it's a simple case that, you know, the United States of America are very strict. They have very strict laws. And, you know, for your protection, um, don't want you trading cryptocurrency, it would seem. And Bybit introducing KYC, which is fine, right? I've KYC, I'm from the UK. I'm going to continue trading on Bybit. It's not a problem. But for our USA friends across the pond, um, they are going to be forced to leave Bybit, right? Because KYC, they cannot 
you cannot KYC on Bybit because it is, uh, you know, the US uh, regulations do not want to allow, you know, cryptocurrency trading, it would seem. So again, you can do all your own research on this, but personally, um, something that you've got to be aware of. And I'll just give you a few points of what I'm looking at here when it comes to looking for a new exchange. Uh, I've got this quick clip to play for you all, and then I'm going to resume final talk off on that speculation and this price action on Bitcoin, moving on to the next levels and the technical analysis. Um, so yeah, let's just review this and be back in two minutes. I have a very good track record of picking good exchanges to trade on. Of course, my main income and you know profession is trading. Thus, before I put my money in crypto onto exchange, I do a lot of research. Of course, I have been and will continue to trade on Bybit, but for the customers and clients that we have and you know friends and colleagues that are from the USA, of course, with KYC being introduced, they cannot KYC on Bybit because it is a banned country. Uh, so naturally, I want to do my best and try and help you find the next best exchange. And I'm very open with this. I will be transparent and you know I'm really giving each exchange a fair game. Shout. Okay, and recently I've been posting about this and letting you know I'm going to be testing very important features for the exchange. And what I noticed was I kept on getting shield bit get bit get bit get bit get. And I know <laughs> from the past, uh, you know, I've obviously spoke about bit get and give my opinions, but I wanted to do a fair test. And so I'm currently tra trading on Femex, Apex, Mex, C, Bing X, and bit get. And I know before you say you've said they're a scam in the past. Well. Yes, and now also my suspicions are also getting confirmed. Well, look at this. This is just crazy. So all of the comments are bit get, bit get, bit get, right? And upon looking into these accounts that keep shilling me bit get, I've noticed that they are replying to every single post about crypto shilling bit get, shilling bit get, shilling bit get, shilling bit get, shilling bit get. You know, it's just crazy. These are all accounts that do not follow me. Okay, they're all not followed accounts, and they're all heavily shilling bit get. And for me, this is just very just lights up in my face. This is ultra scammy behavior and very immoral tactics. Um, I mean, I knew firsthand that BitGet is favored by uh, influencers because they pay very well. They pay very well indeed. Okay. But, you know, I, I don't need the money from this. Okay. So I'm not affected by who pays the best. I'm going to be given an honest opinion based off of the actual exchange to trade on. I'm not going, you know, this is the best one that pays. So I understand why people shill bit get because it does pay very well. But for the help of the users, help for yourself, I'm going to have to say based off their immoral tactics and just several stories left, right and center, I'm ruling them out. So that was my opinion there on on uh, bit get in particular. Um, and of course, I'm running tests on five different exchanges. I recognize you know, there is, and you know, people are going to be affected by this, especially, you know, you United States of America's customers. And I want to do my best to try and help you find a good exchange to there to be, you know, looking at. And yeah, for me, that was just like a major red flag after seeing that, that bit get stuff. I mean, if you kind of even read the replies that these people are saying, it is time to start fund trading. Is it that easy? Well, definitely free money. It's like, ah, oh, this free money, bit get start trading it's for me it was just like oh this reply was hilarious by the way um <laughs> i was securing my funds that's why i chose bitget as it offers the option of kyc then the guy says and that's why i appreciate bitget's approach of not requiring kyc it's just like just kind of hilarious but anyway yeah from my opinion um you know of course i'm gonna get some hate and, and backlash from saying this uh but yeah I'm not going to bow down to these Amora exchanges for, you know, dollar returns. And that truly, for me, credibility and trust are extremely important. You know, you're never going to see me selling myself out for a pay paycheck at the expense of others, which unfortunately in this space, a lot of other influencers, or as I say here, better said, fake traders, right? Uh, they love to do. They will sell you out for a back for for a backhander for a bit of a paycheck, and uh, you know they don't have your best interest in heart at all. Uh, thankfully, I've made <laughs> good sums of money from trading, and I am really putting in this time and effort and research to find you the best exchange. I'm not going to be taking backhander offers or anything like that. 
And yeah, that's why BitGet is off the table. They they would offer me, let's just say, a healthy sum of money um, for me to say, use their exchange, here's the affiliate link, but I'm not going to do that. It's as simple as that. Um, so, you know, bringing it back to the final point before we finally get onto the TA here, um, is this downtrend caused by KYC? My answer to this is no. First of all, people have now been aware for a few weeks that 8th of May is the cutoff date. You can still be trading right now, for example, on, on Bybit without KYC. Uh, 8th of May is the one week time, the cutoff date. But because we've had such a long time or a few weeks to prepare for this, well, people are making a few decisions, KYCing, uh, which is like what I've done, for example, I've KYC'd, so it's not a problem, or simply um, removing funds from the exchange and searching for another exchange. So with this happening slowly in droves, uh, I don't see this as a major reason of a, of a sell-off. Yeah, the technicals are showing us the reason for a sell-off, not KYC coming into place. And also KYC is going to be more and more and more required. There are, of course, still a few exchanges, some of which I am testing right now that don't require KYC. But we're going to see even these, such as you know, even BitGet, Femex, uh, Apex, uh, BingX, Mexi. I, I believe that with time, they will also require KYC. So, um, yeah, it's kind of just this is the USA for you right now, right? Um, and so, yeah, my opinion is that this sell-off is not because of KYC. Anyway, bringing it back to the charts, which is what I prefer to talk about. Um, currently here locally, um, I did... But I do believe that we're going to get a lower decrease in price, personally. Um, but that's not to say it's like game over, I'm really bearish, anything like that. No, for me right now, it's just level to level environment. Uh, I personally have went away uh, on a business trip, come back, and now I'm fully focused on the charts. I deleted my analysis, I redone my analysis, and come up with new biases. Of course, you asked me back a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, five months ago, you know, I was a very big bull very bullish looking for higher prices. It's not to say I'm bearish now, but I am, you know, removing underlying biases and just, you know, just trading the charts for now. Okay, that's what I do best. And <laughs> that's how I'm going to continue to do best. Uh, so for me, as it stands, our next major level to the downside here would actually be around this monthly naked point of control. This is nice because we'll be taking out $28,000 psychological we'll be coming into the monthly NPOC. Uh, which which we are we're tapping around right now, uh, but we do have the low from the 28th of uh, April up to this high, okay, up into around this CC. And if we take this from here to here, we can see we're at the low of the CC. So, uh, of course, an interesting level right now. Uh, could we get a reaction from the CC? The answer is yes. But nevertheless, I would still prefer to see a little bit more of a drop and test a more important level. And the way that I judge my analysis is that once we have tapped that level, a few things, a few things, you know, run through my mind. The first is a lower term time frame scope. So just as this is how we got this long trade entry here, our NPOC around here, we slightly front run the NPOC. And then that lines up a swing failure pattern trade, right? We take the low, close back above, there's your long entry. Where's the target? Back up to range high, which we hit for the short entry for back down. Simple stuff. So for the lower term time frame traders, this is another technique that I would continue to use, right? See if we slightly front run the level, then get at the SFP. Well, then that's a long trade setup, right? And that's what I love to do when I'm talking about base, my trades off of the reaction. I visibly you know, with my eyes, look to see, is there something such as a swing failure pattern? And if I don't see that, well, then I'll come over to the order flow. And I'd start to be looking at the HL, trades, time counts, but merging that together, of course, with your open interest, okay? Seeing how many trap traders that we have in here. Oof, yeah, we, we are getting some really great divergences potentially forming here, by the way. <laughs> wow. Um... Yeah, you've seen a lot of uh, new trades open here, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, but yeah, when I talk about making a, a trade reaction, like trade, trade, death, taking my trade based off of the reaction, it's simply that visibly and then with the order flow. If I don't like the reaction, uh, then I won't take the trade. It's like today, actually, when we formed this secondary test here. This was for me a, not a long trade, and this is not hindsight. This is what I said as well in the time. This was not a long trade for me. Why? Well, reason number one is the reaction was too quick to, you know, if you're longing after this wick, which didn't take the low, you're longing straight into the range POC. It's just not a good long trade. 
And second of all, there was no trap traders. This on the order flow is also not a good reaction. I will show you this question where I answered uh, in terms of the, this is the advantage of having, um, you know, access to the questions channel, right? Because people ask like, is this a good long? And, um, you know, for me, this is now not a, a, a long trade because we are simply too late. It's already at the range POC. So you don't want to be long enough after that reaction. So it's take it into context, know when it's not good along, okay? Short range high, brilliant. Even if you missed the swing photo pattern, what did you do? You actually retested the CC, high to low. Retests of the CC, right? And then we get the drop. Around range low, but the reaction is too quick. You simply don't have a long trade there. You're back into the range point of control. From that range point of control, we obviously find resistance and it's bringing us down now. But FYI, as we retested that range point of control is as we saw the ES pullback. So, you know, you start to really analyze the market here and, and not just take quick, you know, impulsive decisions. You want to move away from this type of impulsive, get in, get out, get, you know, taking trades without having any idea what you're doing, just trading in the moment. No, but if you take a step back, you already just take a deep breath and you analyze the charts, you simply wait patiently for your good levels to be hit, have your alert go off, Check the reaction with your eyes. Check the reaction with your eyes with the order flow. Pin this together, and you're going to go from this irrational, emotional trader losing the vast majority of his trades and just seeing his PL go down and down and down to actually a methodical, well thought through, you know, smart trader that is patient, waiting for trades, waiting for reactions, okay, making informed decisions. And you're going to see that win rate dramatically increase you're going to see that PL curve go from down heading back to upwards and you know that's what this is how you do it there's no sort of magic trick you can see here this is not a surprise the current downwards move when you look at your correlated markets when you understand bigger levels in play um just requires a bit of patience you know like how did i know not to long even at the start of this video and for me that's not an actionable trade setup it would either be lower or a reclaim of the range. And that's where I also acknowledge as a trader, I trade in probabilities, I think in probabilities. Does price have to go down to test this $28,000? So it doesn't have to. And I could update my probabilities and bias based off of a CA reclaim of the roll old range. Okay, that would then lead me to believe, well, we've now seen a failed auction with a lot of trap long, trap shorts in this case at the low of the failed auction. But as it stands, we're seeing high delta, high volume increases on a downwards move with a bigger level one tapped. From this bigger level, I'll make an informed decision. Do we see a reaction? If not, I will simply keep looking down and down and down. So if we do end up getting a big crash, I am absolutely comfortable with that. I have my risk management, I have my stop losses, and I'm only going to take a few select trades. Just because I have a level also doesn't mean I'm going to take the trade. I want to see the reaction based off of that level. So for me, that's the reasons why I am personally looking for lower here. I don't care. <laughs> I'll speculate that this is because of KYC. I say this is the reasons on the chart. You know, this is the chart. This is the analysis telling us why we're going lower. X, Y, Z reasons I'm not really that bothered on, right? Again, at the end of the day, I am going to remain on buy bit. That's where I'm going to trade. I am not leaving, but then being in the UK... Uh, you know, this is fine. And the majority of Europe, it's just the, pretty much the USA, uh, United States of America are going to have a problem with this. But again, do your own research into all this, right? And uh, yeah, bit get, I'm staying fully away from that one, not going to lie, just screams to me scam. And I know the amount of money they're pumping into influencers to promote it. And unfortunately, a lot of influencers are going to simply take the money. But for me, yeah, this is just immoral and, and I'm not going to participate. But I will continue my research into, you know, now four other exchanges um, of what could be, you know, beneficial for our, for our US friends. So I'll continue with that and let you know over on Twitter. And the last thing that I actually wanted to make you aware of here is that I've started to do a lot of Q&A sessions. So question and answers, interaction uh, with you. Actually, it's so much easier over on Instagram because on Instagram, I can see... I've been trading. Um, uh, would, you know quickly take that video, uh, take that question, do a video response or a written response. And this Instagram is a much superior platform for this quick interaction with, um, you know, people that are interested in trading. Also, we could throw some like lifestyle things in here, etc. Um, so if you're interested in getting into that 
more real-time interaction with myself with Q&As. Uh, we had 240 questions in the day. Um, and so just so you're making aware of that, if you want to see more of that, if you're interested, head over to the Instagram chart champions. Make sure you're on the white one because there's like 100,000 fake Daniel accounts. But simply, it's chart champions spelled correctly. So if you want to get in on those Q&A sessions, um, get some tips and tricks, well, you can get that from Instagram. Uh, for me, that's a wrap up of this video. I'm just going to say I hope you've enjoyed. hope it's all made sense. And naturally, I will be doing more in-depth analysis uh, in my next video as I won't be having to talk about the discussion of KYC again. We'll just go straight into the analysis, straight into the video. And, um, you know, if you want that more, again, real-time updates in terms of trading, that's what you get in terms of the Discord. You can ask all your questions, get answers on every single question that is asked to myself. I give the answers, right? I'm coming in here, answering all the questions. You got myself and the other coaches, trading channels. That's where you get your more real-time updates. You got the community also alongside you if you want to make some friends and trade. Um, you know, you got the community, you got the coaches channel, and of course the website is where you got all the educational content, new strategies. New strategy came out today from Eagle. Absolutely wonderful one. This is reading the order book, the depth of market, time and sales. Brilliant video that I recommend you check out. And of course, that's where you get the diet, daily live stream updates, the live trading streams, all of that good stuff that you want to learn from over on the website, chartchampions.com. It's going to be me signing out. Going to say thank you ever so much. Truly hope you've enjoyed. And uh, yeah, cheers, everybody. Trade safe. Do your own research at the end of the day. And um, yeah, I just truly hope that my information here is uh, or can be of help. Thank you ever so much. And that's me signing out. Goodbye.